Thanks to Skillshare for supporting this episode of SciShow Space. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Ever since we first discovered fire, humans have had an insatiable appetite for energy. As our population grows, we're always on the lookout for more sources of reliable, clean energy that can power everything on our planet. And when we reach out toward the stars, we'll need energy to power our exploration efforts, too. One option, harnessing the solar wind for practically unlimited energy. The idea has a lot of potential. You might even say it's out of this world. Now, we are no strangers to using energy from the sun to power our homes, gadgets, even our Mars rovers through photovoltaic panels that convert light energy into electricity. But the sun puts out a whole lot more than just light. It also emits a constant stream of particles known as the solar wind. In the solar wind, charged particles accelerate away from the surface of the sun, reaching incredible speeds of 750 kilometers per second. Here on Earth, almost all of these super energetic particles are deflected by our magnetic field. But out there in interplanetary space, they are an untapped energy source. So in 2010, a pair of U.S. physicists designed a satellite concept that could harness this solar wind and beam the energy back to Earth. Their creation is known informally as a Dyson Harup satellite after one of the authors and another influential physicist, Freeman Dyson, who inspired the work. If that name sounds familiar, it could be for a lot of reasons. It may be because you've heard of Dyson spheres from science fiction. A Dyson Sphere, in theory, is like the most ambitious engineering project that you could imagine. It seeks to completely surround a star with artificial structures to capture every last scrap of energy that star emits. That 2010 study, however, showed that such a massive structure would be impractical, even for the most advanced civilization. So the authors proposed a new satellite as a potential alternative, with a deceptively simple design. To start, it has a massive ring-shaped solar sail that's oriented facing the sun. We're used to thinking about about solar sails as a way of catching the solar wind to actually propel a spacecraft, but this ring-shaped design wouldn't shift the nearly four-ton satellite very far. Instead, its goal is to stabilize the satellite and collect the electrons that make up a portion of the solar wind, using them to create an electric potential. That potential is then used to generate a current along a very long, one-centimeter-thick copper wire that's pointing toward the sun. A flowing electric current generates a magnetic field. So now there's a cylindrical magnetic field around this copper wire, and that deflects more solar wind electrons toward a spherical metallic receiver. A tiny bit of this collected energy is cycled back to feed the current in the magnetic field, but most of it can be collected as energy. That energy would then be transmitted wirelessly using an infrared laser pointing at a dedicated receiver on Earth, or wherever the power is needed. Since infrared energy passes through the atmosphere pretty easily, a laser using wavelengths in the infrared range would be the most efficient for transferring energy. The authors calculated that with a 10-meter wide sail and a 300-meter long wire, a satellite could capture and transmit about 1.7 megawatts of energy. That's enough to power about a thousand homes. But if the same technology was scaled up with a wire one kilometer long and a sail nearly eight and a half thousand kilometers across, then it could generate a billion billion gigawatts of energy. Now that sounds like a lot because it's a lot. It's about a hundred billion times what the entire Earth used in 2010. Now that's assuming that we could figure out how to build something that huge in space. Like, this is very big. Aside from the mind-blowing amounts of energy a Dyson Harup satellite could supply, it has some other big advantages. For one, it's self-sustaining, since it uses the collected energy to power the magnetic field itself. The construction, in its smaller, more reasonable form, is simple and is designed to withstand degradation from the powerful solar wind. What's more, we could actually make one right now, with present-day materials and technologies. And it would be cheaper than the equivalent amount of solar panels, since copper is cheaper than photovoltaic panels panels based on 2010 numbers. But there is a problem. To be able to capture the most energetic electrons from the solar wind, the satellite would have to be positioned a really long way away from Earth. Specifically, it would need to be above the plane of Earth's orbit. Getting a four-ton satellite that distance out is a difficult and expensive prospect, and there would be no chance of maintenance or repair. But even that is not the biggest hurdle. Even though lasers are designed to point all of their energy in a really thin 
thin beam, they do spread out ever so slightly by just a fraction of a degree. But over the huge distances we're talking about here, the power laser would eventually spread out so much that by the time it reached the Earth, it would be thousands of kilometers wide. The smaller scale version of the satellite would supply two megawatts of energy, an amount that would be no more powerful than moonlight when spread out over that distance. A more powerful beam would be just as wide, but would then be showering powerful infrared radiation over a huge area of the Earth, which is not ideal. Now, to capture and refocus the widened beam, engineers estimate that you would need a flawless lens anywhere from 10 to 100 kilometers across, which at the moment is beyond what we can reliably pull off, making it the one part of this that we couldn't just decide to do, like, tomorrow if we wanted to. So theoretically, solar wind power has the potential to solve many of our energy problems on Earth and in space. And we're closer than you might think to being able to tap into this sci-fi energy source. But until we can find a better way of transmitting the power over millions of kilometers, a working Dyson Harup satellite is simply out of reach. Now, we humans would not have bold ideas like this one without a lot of creativity, and Skillshare wants to help creative folks hone their ideas and get them out into the world. If you, like us, want to do that on YouTube, you might like their course, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, who you might know as YouTuber Marquez Brownlee. An annual subscription to Skillshare is super affordable at less than 10 bucks a month, and it gives you unlimited access to the classes and communities that are right for you. And if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you can get started with a free trial. So thank you for your support.